Hey y'all, it's Bomber from Bomber's Garage. I got to interview my good friend Christian Eagle Nelson, which was really cool. After that, what was even cooler was interviewing his dad, Ed Nelson. We sat down and talked about his Napa store, NHRA, drag racing, NASCAR, circle track, racing, motorcycles on ice, and dirt track racing, and a lot of street racing and some other stories. I appreciate him sharing this history with us, and wait till the end of the video and check out the slides of more of his racing history. Ed, thank you so much. It was an honor. What is up, y'all? So I recently did an interview about a couple of minutes ago with Christopher or Christian Eagle Nelson. I'm Christopher. And we had the opportunity to be able to speak to his dad, who is an old uh, street rotter, hot rotter, any kind of racing, all kind of good stuff. So I have a couple of questions for him. I'm going to get some stories out of him. So the first thing I would ask you about, tell me about the first cars that you had or first car you had. It was a 1955, 55 Chevrolet. Nice. I'm a huge fan of the 55. I actually like 55 Chevys more than I like the 56s or the 57s, but the 56 does have that tool, little, cool little, uh, the tail light access. For the, yeah, that makes it a little cool. People can't find the gas gap. Exactly. But the 55 to me is one of my favorites. Was it fast? It's a 365. Oh, nice. Chevy in it. Yes, it was. I like that. Um, how did you get into, you owned a Napa store in Connecticut. How did you get initially into Napa or, or decided that you wanted a parts store? Was it because you wanted a discount on parts? Pretty much. I wanted something close to home. Actually, um, when I first started getting involved with cars when I was a kid, um, I ended up getting a job part-time at a parts store mm -hmm. and then went back to work paving driveways and got a job with being a factory rep and I had the opportunity to open a Napa store and we jumped all over it and here we are. I would say the transition from paving driveways to going to owning a Napa store was a pretty good choice. Yes, it was. Yeah, that's a lot of backbreaking work. So ask your son this. And with you, I'm a little, with him, I knew what the answer would be. With you, I'm a little bit unsure. Um, if you were to only do one or, or watch one, would it be drag racing or NASCAR? NASCAR. Definitely NASCAR. All right. Yes. I heard about a lot of... Uh, about a lot of your street racing. So do you have, of all ages, dead or alive, a, a favorite driver? Probably would be Kenny Schrader. Oh. He, uh, he's a, a real man, and he's earned everything he's got, and he never forgets the fan. And uh, we got to know him pretty good. He wanted to buy one of my cars, and he was driving around Charlotte all one day. Um, but he's a, he's a real, real guy. It's nice to know him. I like that. Um, is there a track that is a favorite of yours? Um, I like Stafford Speedway mm -hmm. as it was so close to us. I grew up on it. I used to, when I was five years old, I used to ride my bicycle up there to watch them on the dirt. Um, but Stafford and Dover would probably be my next one. That's awesome. I remember growing up, I had a buddy and his dad was telling us stories about drag racing. And he said he would ride his bike up there. And as a kid, they would have him flag the races because they wouldn't beat up a kid. But if a guy, if a grown-up do it, did it, he, he might get into a fight. So they, they had him as a kid, he would get free entry if he would flag the races. Um, I've heard you talk about a lot of engines tonight. And I was wondering what your uh, thoughts are on flatheads. Oh, I love them. Those were, those were the way to go back when. I like the sound of them. Oh, yeah. Um, they're... They make some horsepower. Unfortunately, these days, if it, it's hard to find the people that still knows how to work on it. I've talked to a few people because I've got an old flathead that I'm playing. I've got a T-bucket body. But they have told me you have to talk to the NASCAR guys that are old school NASCAR to be able to work on the flatheads. Yes. Um, this is something I didn't ask uh, your son, but I believe that a crescent wrench is the best tool ever invented. Uh, you can use it as a hammer, a wrench, a pry bar, a weapon. Do you agree or disagree with that? Probably the best one there was the metric crescent wrench. <laughs> that one works you a know, lot I'm gonna, better. I'm gonna have to get one of those. I don't. Yeah. I think all of mine are standard. Very expensive. I have heard you. Have you wrote or 
you have rode with a couple of NASCAR drivers. Can you share one of those experiences with Sure. How Matt? much time do we have? We got, um, we got a little bit of time. Napa, several years ago, put a deal together where they sent 26 Napa store owners from around the country to mm -hmm. Charlotte. And what we did was we did um, went to the rookie school at Charlotte, and they put it in put us in Michael Waltrip's race cars, and we got to run 50 laps, each of us on Charlotte Motor Speedway. Oh, that's awesome! And we, th I was going fast. I was like 160 or so. That was fast, if you believe that. And I, th man, I'm doing pretty good. And then Michael Waltrip showed up. And they put us in the ride along. So I got out there with Michael driving. And when they gave us his time after he pulled off the track, he was running 185. Oh my goodness. So my speed was nothing compared nothing to either. But I thought I was going fast. That is awesome. Um, blowers, turbos, or nitrous? Do you have a, cho or a preference in those? Uh, blowers. Blowers. And that's what you had? You had a 44? Yes. And it had a blower. Yeah, 468 blown. That a four the, with a 468, it probably uh, it used a little bit of gas when you mashed on that oil. Uh, I used to oh. get about five to a gallon. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, an LS or a traditional hot rod motor, which would you go? Traditional. Traditional. And then he mentioned earlier, which I. I inadvertently become a Mopar guy. I have a couple of, of Mopar rides right now. Um, so you, you have been a Mopar man in the fa in the past? Yes. A big Hemi fan? Yes. What is the fastest Hemi or the coolest Mopar ride that you have had? It'd be a toss-up between the, the blown 468 and my 44. Or I had a 66 satellite with the with the Hemi, with 426 Hemi. Oh, that's It's a toss-up. Okay, and is there any car that you have gotten rid of in the past that you wished you had kept? The Satellite, 66 Satellite. The Satellite? Yes. And if you only had could choose one car, like this would be my go-all, would it be that same car or would it be something different? Something different. Something different. Any ideas on that? A 68 Roadrunner. Oh, nice. 426. He is a Mopar man up over here. I like that. Um, and I also heard you used to do a little bit of flat track racing. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what era, what you raced, and, and where? Um, first off, we used to ice race motorcycles mm -hmm. and then turn that into flat track and the motocross bike. And then I got a regular flat track motorcycle that was a champion winning bike and ran some half miles to New York. Actually, in 1989, I got New York track champion, uh, state champion, New York state champion. <clears throat> and then that was when I realized I was getting old and I figured I'd run while I got the championship and stop racing. Go out when it's going's good. Couldn't afford to get hurt. So originally, did you start off with drag racing on bikes or motocross? Um, motocross. Motocross. Did you ever do drag racing on bikes? Not on bikes. Not on bikes. Um, I would like to hear some hot rod stories from you from the 60s and the 70s. What have you got for me? 60s and 70s. I got a few. Um... Back in the 60s, in 1967, I bought up, I was a senior in high school, and I got a brand new, I take it back a thousand miles on it, the satellite, 66 satellite. Mm -hmm. And that was a real fun car. And uh, met my wife and owning that, when I was owning that car. And here we are, 52 or three years later. Um, so I, it must, I gotta blame that on the car. But that was that was a fun car because it really turned some heads. But that was fun. But when we were also at the same time, we used to have a Seagas Chevy that was we drag raced. And the fellow that owned the car was in Vietnam. And he told us to do whatever he wanted. So we used to run Connecticut. And we'd run New York tracks. We were only 16 years old. 
And that was a lot of fun. Where we would go down and thought it was fast, and we were running, I'll never forget it, we were running 13 second laps, which was nothing, but it was a, it was a 280, and it was a V8, but it was the two, th two, so I think what it was, 240, two, we could, I could, it would, the thing was bored out. So what we used to do is we used to go to the track and we would go in the pits and see what they had more there because it was a sea gasser, depending on what kind of motor you had. So we used to go see what there was less of, less of in the, mo the track that night. So if there weren't many sea gas cars, that's what we were that week. And if there weren't many <laughs> D-glass, that's what we were running. So you would pick which one you had the yeah. better, better advantage. I love that. And we were... So many times we'd be putting that through. It's only a three speed three speed training, and we'd be putting it through the through the lights in second gear at about eight thousand RPMs. That is awesome. That, that was a good day. It was a fun day. You know, you didn't have to spend a lot of money, and that cost us more to get to the races than back to the actually race. For sure, my buddy had a fifty five Chevy, and we would. There's a track in East Texas called the Hallsville. It's been closed for years. And it was known to be the track was very seasoned. You could really hook up good on the asphalt. And uh, we would go over there. He had a straight six in it with the Clifford Performance. Had like the dual intakes for the two, two barrels. And we would drive over there and he would put like, you know, we'd put cheater, drive over there with him in the trunk, put some cheater slicks on. I think he was maybe run like 15s or six. We thought we were doing something. And then on the way back in a place called Marshall Tech, we'd stop and eat at the Waffle House. Oh, yeah. Had a, it, the car eventually would come way, way faster. But I don't think you probably didn't do any street racing, did you? Um, <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> I'm trying to think what. Yeah, I guess we did. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little, a little bit. This is kind of like when your son's out there telling stories in front of mom and you, I think, too, about like, hey, have you heard about this? So did you dabble a little bit with street racing? Yeah. How did you? Did you? Evidently, you did pretty well from very, what I heard earlier. Very well, because back in, <laughs> back in the '60s, I mean, the, the big hot setup was the 396 Chevelles mm -hmm. and the Hemi satellites. And the guys would be picking it up at the dealers on Friday, and they'd be at the drag strip on Sunday, and wouldn't do anything to do but drop oil type air pressure. <laughs> but oh yeah, that was uh, some good times because you'd go through the local hangout, and there was a lot of straight flat towns where we lived, and you'd just go down and you'd pick up a quick twenty bucks, thirty bucks, and people couldn't believe that that like the Plymouth I had. Being as heavy as it was, could smoke them quite often. What it would do, I like that. Um, how much did that change from the 60s to the 70s with what you were racing and, and doing that? Uh, the 70s were mostly the cars, the, the 60s. The 70s were more starting to get into the motorcycles mm -hmm. and the ice racing. Um, still watch the NASCAR on the weekends. But uh, we had a friend of mine had a used to race full midgets and we built a full midget um, running all New England and that was a, had a, mo a Mazda motor in it that was built by a place in California and that was it was three rotary motors in it and it was 472 horsepower good lord it was incredible that's some engineering right there so we, we put it in the tube chassis car that we had for racing on, on asphalt and uh, ran five races with it and then the organization that runs New England, New York, they banned it because it was too fast. Too fast. It was too fast. I don't know, sir, you mentioned, I, did you do ice racing on a motorcycle? Yes. That is absolutely, that's with the spikes? Yes. That is absolutely terrifying. It was, yeah, it could be. What size bike was that that you were running well, on? Well, we did it for a while on 125s and 250s. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into the flat track and with the good bike, that was on a regular flat track bike. And we would run, there's one track up in northern Massachusetts, which was a half mile oval. And we were shifting going down the straightaways. And we were hitting about 130 on the ice. Oh, and my God. It, it was there was one time that I got frostbite in my throat so bad I had to quit for a while. 
But yeah, you, that was a fast, fast track. But yeah, I mean, most of the guys. Yeah, I, like, I like how I like how that we're talking about this. And this is on ice, and talking about going 130 miles an hour, and you're like, yeah, it's a pretty fast track. And it, I'm realizing once again that this is on ice. This is on pavement, dirty thing. This is ice. Yep. Were you, were was any of that alarming to you doing that, or did you just you just hammer down on just it? Just hammer down. Hammer I down never, on never it. Gave, I never really got hurt doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I take that back. Um, but <laughs> take that back. I just can't say. I was running for the New York State Championship with the bike, and mm -hmm. I had the lead. And the second place guy thought he'd take me out so he could win a championship, and he did. And uh, they took me out of there by ambulance, and. Uh, shattered my collarbone which still sticks out but um that was the only real bad one that i had most of them were just on the ground and fall off the bike but yeah that was because i called my wife from the hospital that day i was on my way home after that race which i always did and she said how'd you do today i said ah that good so yeah she didn't think it was very funny i did I like how you're so very nonchalant about it. Yeah, I just fell off the bike, called the, you know, had to give you all off from an ambulance. And it's, it's all that's sticking in my mind is 130 miles an hour. That is absolutely insane. Well, the, re the redeeming part was the following, so that I was done for the year then. Mm -hmm. The following year went to the same event with the family with us. And um, the, I was running second. I think I was running, I was leading for that one, for that championship, and it was the same guy behind me. And this time, he went down, and I won the championship. So I don't know if I had anything to do with him going down by kicking a shift lever as I went by him. Or <laughs> it could have been that. There's so, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So that There's was nothing redemption. Wrong with that. That's when I gave up racing. I said, head off. So what is your, uh, your current ride right now? It is a Chevrolet Suburban. I love what year Suburban? Two thousand seven. I like that. Have you been Have you been doing any street racing in it, or have you retired from that? I was racing a guy getting on the highway here. <laughs> did you Did you win? It was one of those where they're supposed to yield. You know, and it's every day I go by this guy, and I don't give anybody any leave. They're, <laughs> you, they're supposed to give me the right away. You can't. You t can't take the. The racing out of the racer, can you? My wife had to remind me this afternoon that that's her side of the vehicle. <laughs> so, but, okay, but you're out of the motorcycle business, right? Out of the motorcycle Maybe. business. Maybe. You yep. know, they have some pretty cool ones with sidecars that would be pretty awesome. Not down well, here. Not Chris, <laughs> Chris has got the magic plate, and he's the number 21 plate. He does. That, I know. I'm going to get a picture of that. That's pretty, that's an amazing story. His grandfather was the first one in Connecticut, as Chris told you. That's, that's why it's number 21. That's pretty awesome. And we never turned that plate in. So the plate's been in the family for 80 years. That's really, really cool. So so when he when we were going to have to turn the plate in because we didn't have a bike, Chris says, I'll buy a bike. I so, do. I like that y'all have had like a, a huge lineage of racing in your family. You continue to be very active. And watching racing street racing in a suburban which is i think is amazing and that's pretty cool is there a story you would like to uh to share about eagle eagle christian oh yeah i'm sorry i should know that by now um he got my attention when he when you were talking to him that his mother taught him how to drive uh, yes and in a ford ford escort ford gt escort gt he bought that with his all his money and uh, we were, I was teaching them. I was doing a pretty good job. And then down the street from where we live, there's an intersection. And Chris is dropped, we're doing his daily thing, how to drive. He pulls up to the stop sign to pull out into the busy, busy road and had a hard time finding first gear. So every time he went for a gear, it was first gear, first gear. It, but uh, Chris, they take that back. He was going for, he was finding, he was finding re reverse, right? He was finding reverse. So I said, Chris, get it in gear, get it in gear. So he was having a hard time going forward, going forward. So the more we tried, the more into the road we got, which is a very busy intersection. 
So finally, we're out in there, and now it's getting dark. And I'm, I'm getting excited. Chris, I don't care what gear you find, but get us out of here, because we were about to get really crashed really hard. <laughs> finally finds a gear, gets up, pulls in the driveway. I told his mom, I said, okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Has, has his driving skills improved any since then? Yeah, but now what he's got is in good equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he can handle it much better than than I can or could then. So, yeah, he does a very good job. Well, I asked him this, and I was thinking about this. Who would be your second favorite driver? Second? Uh, probably Rusty. Rusty? Rusty Wallace. Yeah, that's a solid answer. Yeah. Who who would you like? Who of the NASCAR drivers would you like to have a couple of beers with and shoot the shit with? Uh, boy, that's a good one. There's, Schrader again. Yeah, probably Schrader again. Mm-hmm. Be- because if you're going to have a beer with Schrader, mm-hmm. you're better on taking like a three cases with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to leave with this: if if back in the day, would you be running Moonshine? Boy, that's a good question. Absolutely. Not not because it's illegal or because of the alcohol, it'd be just because of the equipment you got under you. Well what would you what would be your go to uh for your moonshine rig and say, let's say the late late thirties, what would you build? Probably a th- that's a a thirty probably a Lincoln. A Lincoln? A Lincoln. I like that. I like that a lot. It'd be a Lincoln, a lot of room to store the stuff. Oh yeah, horsepower. Yeah, beef up the spring, the suspension. Yep. I like that. We're gonna talk business later. Wait, I really appreciate you sitting down and talking to me and sharing these stories and getting to hang out with your family day. And I really, really appreciate the stories that we had out by the pool that <laughs> we're keeping between us. Oh, so, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Y'all, thanks so much. Uh, Like and subscribe. Bye, y'all.